have come out pretty well, slightly above the, rev the uh, revised consensus and uh, certainly in line with our own internal plans once we had, to, once we had adjusted for the, uh, the operation challenges both in the Cote d'Ivoire and the slower build up out of Lulo. But you know, I've always said uh, you know, everyone focuses on cash costs and we're, we're a, a profitable company, I'm delighted with the results. Uh, we're, we're very happy that we can post, uh, you know, recommend a, a better dividend on the back of uh, higher profitability and that's what the market wants to see in a rising gold price. Mm -hmm. Taking a look at uh, the, uh, you know, the pace of things moving forward, we've got Cote d'Ivoire presenting quite a big challenge for now. We've also seen below target contributions uh, from your Mali operations. So heading into this new year for 2011, are we looking at lower targets being set from the onset or are you ramping things up? Uh, on the contrary, Alicia, we, you know, we've guided the market, of course, subject to the Cote d'Ivoire um, uh, continuing to progress uh, uh, towards a political solution. Um, but we're guiding a 70% increase in, in uh, gold production this year. Um, that's really higher than what we guided for 2011 at the beginning of last year because you know, we slipped a bit last year, but we certainly haven't adjusted that target. Uh, Lulo mine, which is what you refer to in Mali, it's, it's really one aspect of the Lulo mine, Yalia underground. Uh, we've turned the corner there. We've, we've always uh, said that we'll have it back on track by mid-year, and I'm very confident that we'll do that now. We've broken the back of that challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gara underground mine is, uh, is on target and really is not posing any operational issues for us. And the exciting thing is, uh, you know, we completed the Goncado feasibility. We've already started mining uh, the Goncoto ore body and that will start com contributing to a bigger Lula complex by the middle of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, Cote d'Ivoire, you know, we're saying uh, within our scenario that we're budgeting on, we're saying that uh, Cote d'Ivoire will find a, uh, settle down and find a, a lasting solution by the end of the second quarter and if that happens we, we're, we're comfortable that our guidance of 260 to 270,000 answers is achievable. Of course the problems in Cote d'Ivoire saw your capital program uh, moving behind schedule with the completion of your second stream in Cote d'Ivoire having been delayed. Uh, what new timelines are we looking at on that front? We have finished the second stream now. Uh, we're not going to operate it until, we're, uh, until we see a solution in Ivory Coast. The, the single stream is operating very efficiently uh, we're very happy with that, as I pointed out, you know, as long as we mm -hmm. start that stream, second stream uh, in, in the second quarter, we're very comfortable about catching up and, and achieving our guidance. Um, you know, I think Ivory Coast has been a fantastic achievement for Rand Gold Resources. It really underpins the importance of partnerships and the way we build our, our mines and, and, and in, involve the, the local economy and, and all stakeholders. And so with that uh, you know, invested equity, uh, we've been able to, to manage a situation that, that has been substantially, diff you know, been challenging at, uh, to say the least. Mm -hmm. While things have been positive, I mean, shipping port delays have not been letting you get uh, things into the country. What about out of the country at a time when you could be reaping handsomely uh, you know, off this gold price uh, currently at $1,300 an ounce? To what extent are you being affected on the sales front? Because we still had sales up 25% over the quarter. We, we, as you saw, we didn't sell all the gold. We had some 23,000 ounces in the, in the vault at the end of the year. Just because we are managing the situation, and 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 as you can imagine, you know, moving gold around in in in, in uh, volatile times is always risky. Uh, we've settled that out. We've now sold that gold, uh, you know, in cooperation with all the <coughs> interested and affected parties. It's really uh, for us. It's very important because, and everyone understands this. Uh, Tongan is an investment in the country. Uh, it's big uh, and important. Uh, economic engine in the north. It's an, a massive employer, the biggest employer by far in the northern part of the country. And at, uh, up until recently, we were funding not only the capital, but we were starting to fund the operating costs. We had explained to all the people involved that we needed to sell gold to continue to employ and pay salaries, and we've been able to do that. So, 
you know, I think that's another step forward. And I, I think it, it, it points out that, you know, Rand Gold Resources has always claimed that it really has a long-term strategy. It, it, it's committed to partnerships. And, uh, and, so, and, and, it, and, it, and it boasts that it has an ability to manage African risk, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and we believe that we do, uh, along with uh, the, our strategy of investing for the long term and to make sure that when you invest in Africa, uh, all stakeholders benefit and that you, you're mindful not to get caught up in sort of short term exploitation. Yeah, of course, uh, you are operating in a very uh, expensive business arena. Digging in West Africa is expensive business compared to, uh, you know, where long mining traditions has brought with it power, transport and communications networks as well. We've got your total cash cost target per ounce standing at less than $600 an ounce for uh, this year. How far away from that target are you right now? I think we, you know, we guided 6:30 because of the challenges and the fact, and most importantly, is uh, the grade. Grade is king in in driving that cash cost. And I, you know, I've always said people get hung up on it. Just look at the grade. And and the exciting thing about Rand Gold Resources is looking out over the next five years, we have a constant uh, tr uh, upward trend on our grade. And so we see ourselves driving the, 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 the cash cost down, not because we're doing anything fancy on, on, on financial management, but because we're having better revenues because of the quality of the, of the ore bodies that we're mining. And that's what happens when you are organically driven like Rand Gold Resources. You're constantly finding new mines. The older mines become expensive. The new, new mines are a lot cheaper and, and, and that's what drives us and we you know we've explained today that we we're forecasting you know the lower four hundred dollar total cash cost by 2014 and that's you know we're very comfortable about that. Mark is competitive advantage still firmly and squarely in Africa outside of South Africa are you sticking to Africa profit? You know I'm, a, I'm an African and, and and Rand Gold Resources is an African business uh, its focus is, is to attract Western capital and, and invest it for the benefit of all stakeholders and including our shareholders. And you know, we've delivered significant uh, value for our shareholders. We had a, you know, we've had a small challenge in the last quarter, uh, given the Cote d'Ivoire and Lulo situations, where we still believe that we're, there's a, 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 a lot of value still unlocked, uh, still to be unlocked in our company. Uh, for me, I'm a shareholder myself. I'm, I'm very excited about it and I, and I really am comfortable about it. and it's an exciting time in Africa. It's changing if you see what's happened mm -hmm. in the last 20 years. You know, I think there's you know, just a, you know, a lot to get done as, as Africa itself finds, uh, finds its feet in the world.